Hi everyone, welcome to Green Monk TV. Uh, we're doing a moderated screencast with Jeremiah Stone from SAP. Jeremiah is VP Sustainability Solutions. So uh, today we're going to be talking about operational risk management. And Jeremiah, could you first of all give me a quick intro on why you think operational risk management has anything to do with sustainability? Hi Tom, uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on Green Monk. I'm a big follower and I, I like what you guys do, so it's really a, a lot of fun for me to come on with you here. Uh, you know, when, when SAP has worked with our, our customers and we have a, a customer base in manufacturing of you know, close to 30,000 uh, customers, the, the common thing that comes back to us is that um, you know, companies are engaged and interested in, in running more sustainably and that means using less energy, it means uh, producing less uh, emissions, um, it means recruiting people for the long term and, and making sure that they can adapt to, to changing labor conditions and changing demographics. But um, there are sort of some prerequisites before people, uh, our companies can be successful with that. And one of those is to cut um, operational losses and also to be able to adapt and change uh, within their operations because uh, often these factories, these plants, uh, the, these operations are sort of steady state designed entities where they're very static and they're not really amenable to change. What and so what kind, changing what kind of operational losses are you referring to, Jeremiah? Well, uh, you know, uh, Tom, it, it's easy to think about the, the, the types of catastrophic accidents that happen uh, throughout the world. I think, you know, the Gulf oil spill is something that people think of. Bhopal, you know, you know, 30 plus years on is still high in people's minds. So those sorts of process safety incidents. We regrettably had a fire here in, in the California Bay Area not two weeks ago up, up at the Richmond. Um, refinery and, and these things happen sort of every day and what, what we're seeing is that um, as manufacturing operations and manufacturing I think of oil and gas, I think of utilities, I think of mining, but even transportation, logistics, airplanes, uh, that sort of thing, we've built these systems that are very complex and sophisticated but they're not very change friendly. And, and so to change them, they need to change, they need a radical change for sustainability purposes. They need to have systems in place whereby you can change and continuously improve the, this, this static designed system, whether it's a, a, an energy refinery or a transportation network, without having accidents, without hurting people, without creating environmental spills, et cetera. And we find that our customers are fundamentally lacking that ability. Okay. To tell me something so about or tell me about this operational risk management solution that SAP have. Okay, well, uh, maybe maybe first we can start with what we just talked about in saying that, you know, what our customers are asking us for and our customers are asking us to to help them innovate their operations and and become more sustainable. And really what that is boiled down to when you dig into it with customers is that they typically have environment health and safety management programs. However, they're really run at an individual operational entity level. And so it's difficult to compare different factories, it's difficult to compare different operations, and it's very difficult to get proactive and move beyond a very reactive, oh no, an incident happened, how do we deal with that uh, setting, but rather, you know, identifying risk before it turns into an incident and, and dealing with it. You cannot remove risk from these operations, but you can manage it. And that's really what our, our customers are asking us for. And you know, when we've gone out, we've worked with, uh, I think, close to 50 co-innovation customers now. And working with means going with our teams into their operations, interviewing people throughout the company, and determining what the problems are and where software can help. Uh, what we found consistently is that it's an information flow problem. It's an information flow from uh, you know, the corporate level where the purse strings are, the ability to spend money down to the individual level. And, and some of the problems we find is that there's a really strong and meaningful commitment to safety at the corporate level in the boardroom. However, it's very difficult to understand where to spend the money because you know you, you have these very large sophisticated operations and it's difficult to know where to make the investment and you know getting beyond a better laminated sign on the chain link fence uh, outside the operation is, is, is tough. Um, you know and then when you get to the operational level, well gosh, every you know these days margins are razor thin, you know the current economic situation, most of your your you know line level management or leaders are really focused on hitting um, outcomes or hitting on uh, hitting their targets, and they may be in a position to make bad decisions. You know here we say, can we put in a bigger pump to increase production? Well, if you put in a bigger pump, how do you know that in your you know in your facility 
that's not going to burst a seal somewhere. And that, that's really standard process safety management, but doing that in a consistent, repeatable way successfully is rather difficult. And then at the individual worker level, understanding the operational environment and knowing how to behave, take the right processes, be safe, is a challenge, but we're completely missing the inbound um, engagement uh, conduit, if you will, when they see something wrong, how can one an individual worker, if they see something wrong, report that? All too often when there is a problem uh, and we do an investigation after an incident, well, gosh, the workers who were in that environment knew that there was something wrong. They didn't have a means to communicate that. Okay, so how, how do you fix that? <laughs> well, um, you know, there's a lot of discussion these days in um, the enterprise software community about moving from systems of record to systems of engagement. And this is something we've focused quite a bit on. And I'd like to show you a couple of applications right now where we're taking what would be a typical approach to a system of record to identifying a risk, which would be sort of one of SAP's typical enterprise applications at a, at a specialist enterprise health and safety, you know, environment health and safety management professional level and moving that both directions. And so if we look at this, you could imagine that you're going to have uh, your, your EHS professionals that are, are site level managers, but they're the only ones that really have that information today and they don't have a, a means by which they can push that information up to corporate, nor do they have a means where they can gather at large scale that information from, from the workers. And, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how we're addressing that today uh, in terms of a mobile application. So I'm going to um, share with you now uh, my iPhone, hopefully this comes through. Can you see my iPhone? Yep. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you our safety issue application. Our safety issue application, uh, let me back out of here, this is the entire application and so we're trying to really take a uh, note out of consumer design and have one screen applications without lots of tabs and, and uh, drill through menus and we've designed this application around the if you see something say something um, uh, design principle and actually the, uh, John Astell, one of the uh, the, uh, the mentors worked on this app with us as part of his sustainability activities. And, and you know, when I've got an example here. I raided my, my son's uh, toy chest this morning. And uh, just to give you an example here, you can imagine here's our little repairman uh, out, in, out in the setting. And he notices there's something wrong with this hauler. Well, rather than walking all the way back to the shop, uh, he can simply take a picture of what's wrong with the hauler. Um, he can say, okay, I'm going to use that photo. He can press the record button here and uh, uh, record a description of what's wrong. I'm not going to hit that record button because then you lose the screencast. Uh, maybe enter a quick description here, you know, axle wearing too quickly uh, on hauler. Accept that description and then simply submit the safety issue. And so you can see there that in, in a few seconds, we've gone from, you know, uh, seeing something wrong, recording a, a description with, with audio, and then, and then sending that off to the, the safety experts. And this is uploading, you know, like it would uh, to YouTube or anything else. And what you haven't seen me do is enter my name or enter where I was or any of those sorts of things because we're using location-based services. We're using the enterprise backbone to say who saw the, the thing that was wrong, where are they, et cetera. And, and because we also have the entire asset infrastructure in the background, uh, we can uh, similarly then say, oh, well, actually, we know which truck that was because we have near-field communications, et cetera. So that's how you get more information into the system. But no, nobody ever reads these reports, do they? <laughs> that's an interesting, uh, interesting uh, point. Now, imagine you're in this world where you, you drop the, the, hey, I saw something wrong into the box on the wall, or you submit that paper issue. How do you know what happened if you were the person that reported that? And I'm glad you asked that because, as you can see here, um, you know, we have the ability to capture the safety issue, but we also have this button here that says My Issues. So if I click into that My Issues, what it's going to do is it's going to look for every issue that I've submitted, and I can drill in and I can see the real-time status on that issue and if it's being worked on or not. So now I'm creating mutual accountability with the safety organization. And you say, nobody ever reads that. Well, guess what? You would actually know if anybody had ever, ever uh, written, read it because we're tied into the core SAP system in the background. And now there's been a workflow sent 
to the responsible safety manager, we're using that enterprise backbone now to facilitate communication. So now rather than dropping that paper form off or submitting a form and it just goes into somebody's inbox, now we're using much, much the same in, in any kind of social media. We're using uh, mobility and social media now to push that information to the responsible safety person. And, you know, along with a, a GPS of where we are, okay, it's not picking up, but well, I think I must be in my my Faraday shielded office here. Uh, but um, you know, this would then be picking up my, my GPS. It would also be passing that through to the application. So now the safety manager and the employee have a relationship uh, now, driven by the application. But now the safety manager has gone from receiving one notification every three months to receiving 300 every day. How, how, That's correct. <laughs> how, does, how does he work with that? Or she. Well, I'm not going to drill into that right now, but that's the thing we've always been really good at at SAP is how to deal with large volumes of data. And so we have the ability to sort, slice, and dice um, the, these information coming in. We have uh, heavy-duty analytics to show trending to hotspot on the basis of the information put in. We also have, as you see here, this little flag, immediate action required, yes or no, to help to raise or lower the, the priority. And, and our safety managers tell us, hey, that's okay. My problem in the past was really a lack of data, not too much data, and I want more data. Uh, there is a uh, well-known in, in industry sort of a, a ratio between near misses to incidents. It's about 300 to 1, about 300 observations or near misses to an individual incident. And if you actually go into the data to any of these companies and they say, oh, you know, we had 100 reportable incidents, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, we had uh, 6,000 um, you know, reported near misses, well, they're usually a, quarter, a couple of orders of magnitude off between an observation or a near miss and an actual incident. And so, you know, these professionals actually want more data, not less. Cool. And we give them the tools to deal with that data. But now I'm going to show you uh, how we expose that data to the people who aren't used to dealing with that data, and that's that upper level of management uh, that I talked about before. And so that upper level of management, you know, who's not getting any data at all, if we were to throw, you know, 300 uh, observations of them per day, uh, they wouldn't have any idea what to do with it. But if we take those people who are good at dealing with the data and we expose the output of their analysis to upper management in a mobile device, uh, as you see here, in a way that they can consume it, we can get better investments. And so what you're seeing now is incident root causes. And so somebody would have entered a safety observation with the uh, iPhone app on the left, and then there's a safety professional in between who's processed that, done an investigation, identified root causes. And now we have the ability, let's say your upper management, they're rather visual uh, learners. Um, I can drill in here to a word cloud and rather than looking at this with, with boxes and rows, et cetera, we can expose the root causes to you know, management or, or other users. Let's say you've got you know, people coming into the organization now that are not used to looking at spreadsheets their whole life, but they're used to looking at tag clouds or, or something that you get online, and we can give them their information in a way they can consume it. And so you know, here we can see, okay, we've got a training problem, but let's just say for the sake of argument that uh, we've got a, you know, a non-millennial here looking for uh, the, the root causes and they want to look at that in a pie graph and then they want to say, okay, well I understand the root cause, but I don't understand you know, what in injuries have we been having. So I'm going to add another dimension here. So now I've taken my root causes uh, along the bottom here, defective equipment, lack of training. You know, we still see that spike on lack of training that we saw before, but now we've added the body part that's been injured and now I'm just going to sort by occurrences. So now we can see we've got a, our main root cause is lack of training and we have arm injuries. And so, you know, the, the probability here is that we've got new equipment, you know, we can dig a little bit further. We probably have new equipment in the setting and people are getting hurt by that. And, and we talk about environmental spills, we talk about explosions, but, you know, a big problem with sustainability is it's also how you're treating your labor force and the long-term consequences of what we may be perceiving as smaller incidents. But let me tell you, if you, if you lose a finger or you lose an arm, that's a catastrophic incident to you as a worker. Yeah. And so we want to be able to help with that as well. And also from an employer point of view, your long-term liabilities with regard to workers' compensation, et cetera. And what's great about this app is we know that managers work in, in primarily email. Well, I can now send this to, uh, let's say, my safety manager. Update uh, training. Uh, and, and go ahead and send that off, and I can I can go ahead and you know. I'm really amazed. You should I have I should have you in there. Well, and anyway, I can send that off to you at or after you at Green Monk or whatever. And then and then what this will give you 
is um, all of the data, but also that graphic and say, okay, well, look, listen, look at this data I'm looking at, let's work on this together. And so we're really trying to move from what would have been a system of record approach to uh, safety and risk to a system of engagement approach by pushing out the ability to um, identify risks. And here we can see, we can take a picture there, the ability to identify risks in the operational setting uh, and also the ability to understand what those risks are and take action at the management uh, level. Okay. And what, what kinds of industries uh, would typically be interested in solutions like this? So the, the types of industries we tend to work with in solutions like this tend to be what we refer to as asset intensive industries. So these are industries that have lots of uh, trucks, uh, planes, um, and also uh, large equipment and they're high risk. So you typically think of um, oil and gas, both upstream on the exploration and production side and downstream on uh, the refining side. Uh, also think of any type of large construction. So we're staying in the energy uh, field here. You could, you could think of utilities, uh, which some people refer to as, as large construction companies with generation capacity. Uh, and you know anybody who's going to be putting up, a, say, a windmill farm or um, you know solar, et cetera, it's going to be the same challenge here in terms of people in, a, in with lots of stuff moving them, lots of heavy machinery, uh, mining, uh, mill uh, production. Uh, I mentioned utilities that also would include utilities like um, you know phone etc right. and then you know transportation logistics think of your airlines um, US you know FedEx US post that sort of thing um, there's there's definitely a large demand in those types of industries for this because they're large far-flung organizations where training is a big deal they're very fast moving and risk is also a big deal and so you see the, the potential to have major issues there and what about the current economic climate? Is that impacting on, on sales? I'd say it's driving sales even, even uh, more quickly. We're seeing uh, in this portfolio about a 35% compound annual growth rate over the last three years since the crisis onward. And that's because companies are uh, becoming even more loss averse in the current environment. So, you know, it, it works both ways. When you're trying to grow and you're investing, you don't want to have instance because you want to be fast and agile to market. But also when you're, you're concerned about potential um, production stoppages or issues uh, with regard to your liability, say an environmental spill or a people spill uh, or a people incident, uh, you want to control that as well. And so it's really a uh, cycle-proof investment area in that sense uh, because it's both something you need when you're growing quickly and investing and something when you are at more of a steady state and you're looking to control loss. Okay. Uh, we're coming on time to, to wrap up now. Um, just one last thing. Where, where do you see things going from here? Well, what we've done today is, you know, we've, we've taken our portfolio as, as we have it. And as I mentioned, we have the, these base capabilities in your incident management, risk assessment, worker safety management, and change. And we've moved these into more systems of engagement at both the individual worker level and the corporate level. Where, where I believe we are is we barely built the foundation for what we can do here. And the next step will be uh, utilizing our abilities to deal with big real-time data. And so not just having the intelligence sensor of, of the human pushing data in, but imagine the Internet of Things pushing information into a system like this. And then imagine taking predictive analytics and start to not only identify risk when we see it uh, from a, a professional point of view, but now put algorithms at that. Let's point R you know, at that from a predictive algorithm. Uh, point of view and start to identify latent and hidden risk in our operations so we can have predictive safety as well and then you know, start to utilize our assets as well in the cloud so for example the recent uh, success factors acquisition you'll notice something that you don't see on the screen here is training qualifications um, ongoing learning informal learning via collaboration you know we, the true moving to system engagement we should be utilizing jam here uh, from sap to, to, to help grow communities of practice and communities of expertise around safety across companies and across um, even value chains. And we're starting to see that as well. So I think we've really barely taken the first step of what we can do here. Wow, fascinating. Jeremiah, that's been great. Thanks for being for talking to us today. Thank you so much, Tom. Bye-bye.